All right, uh, so in this video, I'm going to take a look at the Sequential Pro 3 synthesizer, and we're going to take a look at what the shape control and the shape mod control have on the VCO oscillators. Uh, so the Pro 3 has two VCO oscillators, this one and this one, and a third digital wavetable oscillator. Uh, the digital wavetable oscillator does have virtual analog shapes like the saw, the pulse, and the triangle. It also has a sine wave and super saw emulation, and then a bunch of digital wave tables here. All right, so, but for this video, we're just gonna focus on the uh, two VCOs and the effect of these two controls, shape and shape mod. Uh, so we'll start out here with the uh, basic triangle shape, which is the negative 127 value. All right, so yeah, negative 127, we've got a standard triangle here. Pretty basic. Uh, I'm just going to start bringing this uh, shape number up and show you what happens in the oscilloscope. All right, so here at negative 64, uh, we've got this sort of asymmetrical triangle shape. Uh, it's got this sort of uh, sharp front to it here, uh, sort of like a pulse wave. Uh, this is a useful sort of uh, triangle shape with some meat on it. I'm going to keep on going uh, towards zero here. Negative 64, negative 64. All right, so here we're at negative 32. We've got this sort of triangle saw combo here. I'll just keep moving through. Okay, now we're at zero, and we've got the perfect saw wave here. Nice meaty sawtooth here. I'll continue to uh, bring up the shape. So right around here in the 20s, we start to get this sort of uh, double saw shape. And right around here, around 32 or 33, an interesting thing happens where you have the two saws in the double saw shape. Uh, they have about equal amplitude at uh, this value. And so essentially what's happening here is uh, the octave has been raised one octave up uh, since you've got two saws uh, at basically equal amplitude. Uh, so we'll continue up from here. So uh, through this uh, range up to 64, we've got some uh, nice variants on sort of a double saw shape with offset amplitudes. Uh, a lot of good sound design with uh, these sort of shapes. All right, I'm going to stop here at 94. So an interesting thing happens here at 94 on the shape dial for either of these VCOs. Um, and basically we get another standard saw wave here. Uh, so at both zero and at uh, positive 94, we've got a saw wave. Uh, this one is almost identical to the one at uh, zero. It has a little bit less amplitude and maybe just a tiny variance to the shape in here. So there's probably a slightly different uh, harmonic pattern, uh, but for all intents and purposes, uh, it's pretty much another version of a sawtooth at 94. Uh, now we'll continue up from 94 toward the square pulse wave. So you see in that range there from uh, 94 up to 127 or 128, I've uh, got a lot of variants of the uh, pulse and saw together. And then at full 128, we've got a standard uh, square wave, square pulse wave at 50% uh, duty pulse. All right, so that sort of uh, just goes through the uh, shape and uh, what variance you have uh, between the triangle, the saw, and the square pulse. Uh, it sort of seems like there's a, almost like an extra shape in between uh, the triangle and saw and the saw and the pulse too uh, that gives a lot of variation uh, in here. All right, so now let's take a look at the uh, shape mod control. I'm just gonna take a look at it in the uh, standard three shapes, so at the triangle, the square, and the pulse. So uh, first we'll start out with the triangle and we'll sweep the shape mod here. So 
this one's an interesting one. We have this sort of wave folding effect going on. Um, there's definitely some uh, good sound design to be had with the shape mod on the triangle, I think. Um, I'm looking forward to doing uh, some modulations with this, both with the LFOs and with envelopes. So that should be fairly useful. Uh, we'll move up the shape to zero here so we get the sawtooth again. And I'll play with the shape mod here. So the shape mod in the uh, in the sawtooth wave, it's introducing a sort of uh, pulse into it with a medium to low duty cycle here. So you still have all the uh, rich overtones and harmonics of the saw, uh, but you've got a lot of that buzziness uh, introduced with the pulse wave. So that's a very useful uh, range for shape mod there. And then we'll move over here to the square wave. So the square wave at zero shape mod is a perfect square or a 50% uh, uh, duty cycle square. Um, as we move up here, So what happens with the uh, square pulse wave is um, we've got a range from 50% duty cycle up to 100% duty cycle, basically. Uh, we can't go less than 50%, unfortunately, uh, but you can get a lot of nice uh, pulse width modulation there by swinging the shape mod uh, back and forth uh, in the pulse mode. Uh, one thing to note here is that uh, values of 245 or greater are where the pulse wave clips through zero, and so you get no audio output. So here at 244, we've just got this little teeny buzziness. Then by the time you hit 245, uh, there's no audio there. So from 245 to 255, you're not going to get audio. You've clipped the uh, pulse width modulation duty cycle here. Uh, so just be careful if you're doing uh, PWM um, to not cross over there unless you're purposefully trying to get that effect of uh, going through zero with the PWM. All right, so that pretty much uh, just goes over the shape and shape mod and gives you an essence, uh, a feel of uh, what the different waveforms are that you can get out of this. Of course, there's an infinite amount more combos uh, with all the different variants of uh, shape position and shape mod. Uh, well, I think that will pretty much wrap it up for this video. Um, let me know if you have any questions. All right, have a good one. Bye.